Hi guys, welcome back to the Keeping It Real Estate Show with your hosts Justin and Brandy from Team Grande at Remax Escarpment. On today's show, we're talking about inspections and my favorite guest, Stuart from A Buyer's Choice. He started his own company here in Hamilton and has a lot to say, so let's dive right into it. So Stuart, tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, so firstly, thanks for having me. Um, name is Stuart Webstale. Um, I own a Buyer's Choice Home Inspections in Hamilton. Originally from the UK, uh, qualified heating engineer and electrician. Uh, I've also got a master's degree in mechanical engineering and also an MBA for business and finance. Um, in regards to the home inspections, I'm a certified professional inspector, um, qualified through Internachi and also trained through Carson Dunlop on the home inspection training side. Okay, so for those a, who don't, that was a mouthful. Yeah, so. that's a ton of designations. That's great. That's yeah. what we like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I mean, a lot of people, I think they kind of have an idea of what a home inspection is, but there's actually different types of inspections. Uh, the, I know the main three that Pierre does, you do pre-inspection, you do the pre -con or the uh, consultation, and then you do a full home inspection. Could you maybe just break down what the three of those are and what the differences yep. are? So starting with the pre-consultation, um, it's an inspection done with the buyers during the actual viewing. So it's a 30 minute to an hour inspection whilst they're at the site doing the viewing. It's come around more because home inspections have been dropped out of conditions recently. So this helps the buyers have some comfort when they're putting the offer in. When we're there, we do the main components of the house. So the roof, the attic space, foundation structure, grading, go down to the basement, check through the basement and the foundation there, still do thermal imaging and moisture check, electrics, heating, hot water, um, checking into the washrooms, the kitchen area, some receptacles, windows, and as much as we can within that hour's time. Then, whilst that sounds a lot, it's your main components of the inspection side of things. And it gives them the confidence to go ahead and put the offer in. Then you've got the pre-inspection, which is completed for the sellers. And then you've got the traditional home inspection compete completed for the buyers. The two are very similar, um, just the difference between us is that we include with the home inspection a full warranty package on mechanical structural mold and sewage for three months and then a five year roof leak warranty. And then obviously you get a full digital report, you have our warranties, you have our errors and emissions insurance with the pre-inspections mm -hmm. and also the home inspections and then the full digital report on that side. So it's around about 100 pages with about 300 pictures. Wow. Whereas the so pre-consult is about 40 pages, slightly less, but you don't get the errors and omissions because it is a visual consultation more than anything. And uh, actually, I just wanted to add this in because I was just thinking about it right now. Um, what, how fast is your turnaround? So usually same day for reports on all of them. Um, Pre-offer pre consults, it's sort of normally within an hour to two hours of completing a visit. I'll get it done just depending on my day, but I guarantee to get them out the same day, especially with the bidding side of things, you need it before you go in. With the full home inspection and the um, pre-inspections, usually same day or the following morning at the very worst, but due to schedules, I like to get them out the same day so yeah. everybody can see what's happening yeah mm. i'm a huge fan of this i think i've mentioned it on almost every every podcast, every podcast. Here, talks about <laughs> like the <laughs> pre-consultations where yeah. you know you go in you do it before the offer date so you have an idea of what to expect when the uh you know when the offer date comes you know if you can remove that well you can remove the inspection condition but you know what to expect after yeah. you purchase it like am i gonna have to replace the furnace am i gonna have to yeah worry it, about it just pre-arms you so like you go in at the top of your budget at least you know you've got 10,000, 5,000, however many thousand, just to put into the property. It mm. gives you that little bit of comfort knowing that you're not overstretching yourself because if you overstretch yourself and then you get fifty to sixty thousand yeah. dollars worth yeah. of items to do, it can be incredibly daunting for a buyer, and especially first time buyers. Mm -hmm. And that's mm. when we tend to see it a lot more on that side. And I've called you the day of too. I'm like, yeah. hey, please come help me. And not, not for the client, but also it gives me an, as an agent peace of mind that I'm getting someone a house that I feel comfortable with them buying. Yeah, I've hour and a half, 
I've been on site, dri yeah. driven an hour to get there before, <laughs> um, last minute. So it all depends on the day, um, but also we offer that to yourselves. If there's anything that you're unsure of in a property, send a picture and I can normally respond over the phone. I've done that very too. Very quickly as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna ask you, what are the main things that you check for inspections? So obviously main thing is the high level components, so the roof, the foundation and structure. So on most inspections I use a drone to get up on the roof, check all the shingles, the chimney, the flashing, all of the outside exterior of that structure to make sure there's no sort of sagging, waving in the roofs. Yeah. Then obviously foundation and structure is pretty critical, so we go around the outside looking to see if there's any sort of cracks and um, movement on the exterior side, looking at the grade and make sure that all the moisture's been cleared away from the foundation line. Mm -hmm. Then down into the basement again, checking for moisture in the basement, any movement on the foundation and the structure using thermal imaging and moisture meter to make sure there isn't anything hidden. And then it's gone through all of the mechanical systems in the house, A, checking mm -hmm. the date, checking the cleanliness, checking the efficiency, and then checking for any sort of like splits, cracks and heat exchangers, any issues with the hot water side of it. And then throughout the house, it's checking everything's working. So looking for any electrical issues, sort of open grounds, live neutral reverses, all of those sort of side of things. So it's just making sure the house is working safely, yeah. built solidly, and not gonna be going anywhere on that side of it. Yeah, so um, I just wanna throw this in there. Since we're in the winter right now, how, if you take a drone to the roof, um, what do you do with all the snow and everything? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, if the snow's up there, we can't do too much with that. Um, we take as look, good a look as possible as we can with the shingles that are clear. Um, outside of that, then you're looking at the, sort of like for the sagging of the ridge, you're looking right. at anything in and around, any sort of terminals that come through, plumb stacks, chimneys, um, heat and vents, anything that comes through there, to look around at to see what the shingle condition and everything is like from there. And then the primary part of it then comes to check in the attic space. So then we go right. into the attic, thermal image in the attic, check all of the sheathing and check all the condition of all the joists and structure just to make sure there's no moisture coming through. So it's, it's, you just don't get to visually gauge the shingle age and shingle full condition, okay. but you can easily pick up moisture in the attic, so if there's a shingle right. gone. And you have your thermal. You've got the thermal camera, camera and everything. Yeah. So it picks up if there's a shingle gone very easily and you see damp spots really quickly okay. that way. So okay. the drone in general is huge. You're, I've, I gotta be honest, I don't think I've ever seen an inspector use a drone no? to look at a roof before until you came along. Oh. I know a lot of guys get the binoculars from across the street. And, yeah. Really? Uh, but yeah. Well, drones are expensive, like getting the drone aren't they? up there, like I mean, it's it's a huge benefit, I think. A, a it's good for safety. Mm -hmm. B, it probably I've got a four K drone. I can probably get closer to the shingle than what I could with my head. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, every time you're walking on a shingle, you're causing damage, and you're also weakening the structure. So True. if I have to go up, I have the ladders, and then I'll go up on there to check anything that really needs to be looked at, mm -hmm. but. Primarily, the drone does a better job than the eyesight can do on that. So it's good, it's safer, and it prolongs the life. And then with Hamilton Airport, some places I can't put the drone up. Mm -hmm. Then we carry, oh, yeah. I've got a 40 foot pole, which connects to a camera and connects to the phone. So I can just literally do exactly the same as what the drone would do, but just on a extendable pole. Nice. And uh, just Bluetooth between the two. Nice. That's so fun. since, uh, one question I got is, we do a lot of business in Hamilton, obviously. What's the most common, one of the most common issues you see in Hamilton when you're inspecting houses? Um, the, the biggest issue really is foundation and structure. There are such a lot of older homes which are around with the old stone structure, early concrete structure, and you tend to see a lot more sort of cracking and moisture coming through. And that's the most common, mm -hmm. quickly followed by knob and tube wiring, mm -hmm. which yeah. is still available and still being, mm -hmm. being maintained. Mm -hmm. um, don't like to see it, always recommend it's removed, <laughs> but that is there, and then proof structure. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're the main ones which you tend to sort of come up against, um, but every house will always have some sort of issue with a foundation and structure. Mm -hmm. You can't make them fully waterproof. 
and then obviously the brick sidings when the mortar starts to deteriorate that becomes quite that one's probably the most consistent in the reports mm -hmm. is that there is sort of mortar um, degradation on the siding just with such old houses too like a lot of the homes in downtown hamilton from the 1900s and that i, I know when we're looking at houses down there to pretty much expect that we're probably going to see some moisture in the basement yeah it's yeah. you can't unless you have a really good waterproofing system done and it's a maintained and the membrane's done in externally and protected that way then you can probably 99 percent guarantee you're going to protect it against moisture but there's still always that little bit of a chance of just some moisture seeping through the concrete foundation the stone then a waterproof so yeah. it's going to be a little bit and as long as it's nothing major and there's no heaving no lateral pressure or anything on that side of it it can easily be repaired and it can easily be controlled mm. nice nice okay um are there things that you can't inspect things that i can't inspect mm -hmm. Not really. Um, so I pretty much cover um, septic systems. I cover wells. Okay. Um, I do commercial as well. So I can do three phase, single phase, everything oh, cool. on that side of it. So I can cover the pretty much everything across. And then obviously we do wet inspections for the wood fireplaces. Um, so there's nothing that I've come across that I've had to say. I can't inspect. Okay. Um, there are certain things that you put pressure on yourself with where yeah. people go in and spray foam basements and then you, <laughs> you do struggle with seeing behind them yep. because they're always warm. Been there. And they're beautifully maintained for water moisture Yeah. and it's difficult to see anything behind it. That's one of the biggest challenges that when you see spray foam you don't know what it's been done for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Stuart and I have a little backstory on that one. I won't. I won't but get into hard. it. I mean, it's just like finish, even in finished basements, it's got to yeah. be tough to really see everything. And I know we sometimes I see it in houses after I know clients have purchased it is uh, in an older home is they may have updated the electrical, like they may have updated the panel, they may have updated what we can see, yeah. but it could be connected to knob and tube in the wall, and then. When you're going to do stuff, you find knob and tube in the yeah. wall, right? And I know that things like that are... It, it is a challenge. It's tough to see, like it's, you know... And, and that's why with all inspections and all inspectors and everyone will say it's non-invasive. We can't mm -hmm. cut into drywall and we yeah. can't so I knock walls down to look into that side mm -hmm. of us. We have to look at our best bet. But if you check the panel, then check the receptacles get a good idea because mm -hmm. you find out that the ground and isn't there or something on that side so you can direct an electrician in the correct way yeah nice. and then uh, in terms of inspections I know we talked about the drone like what other cool tools do you have like what's your go-to equipment um, looking at hoses well as I said the drone definitely um, then the flare camera I carry a c5 flare camera which pretty much helps with identifying moisture issues and then I also have a air quality tester as well, which I can go through and test for air quality, any sort of virus or bacteria, and also mold. Oh, that's um, neat. And they're the main ones. And then just your normal sort of hand tools and your moisture meter for just detecting sort of the levels of moisture which the flare will pick up. Nice. And then just to break down that flare a little bit more, because I think some people, every time somebody sees it for the first time, yeah. it's like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Because it almost gives you almost like x-ray vision. I know it's not, but... It's, it's, it's based off heat, yeah. right? It's based off heat, um, heat loss, and everything on that side of it. And it, it gives you good clarity on where any temperature drops are. And then you can look at it to see whether it's moisture or whether it's just natural draft on that side of things. And yeah, people panic when you pull it up. And you can have a laugh and say it's an x ray camera and you see them run <laughs> <laughs> things on that side of it. But it purely is just to see in behind the wall cavities and things on that front to detect a, the cool spots. Yeah. Didn't we see? some water in a roof one yep. time that was that was pretty cool yeah it can see it can sort of pick up the cold spots anyway so you can check along ceilings check along ducts check along the roof panels um, obviously basement walls drywall um, actually into the floor cavities as well nice nice um, do you ever inspect new construction yep yeah I've done quite a few um, quite a few of them they still have issues, still recommend What's like the most common issue? Most common is issues with building fabric, so damaged brickwork when they're oh. actually building it, and then moisture getting into the structure, and then also undersized heating. And 
Undersized heating, eh? You yeah. find that's an issue with a lot of the new construction. A lot of the new constructions. I had one, I won't name the builders, but out in Grimsby, it was the whole street was probably 15 to 20,000 BTU undersized for the furnaces, even with the HRV unit. And so, like, what do you do if you find that? You know? um, identify it, highlight it to the client, and yeah. then it's up to them whether they want to take it to the builder, obviously, or replace it and put a new heating system in. But it's all down to comfort. You could have an undersized heating system and be really comfortable in the house. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that, oh, so it's not, it's not in, in it, the... It's not a legal side of things. It okay. has to be, but so like we say if it needs a 60,000 BTU, but a uh, furnace, mm -hmm. then people might be comfortable slightly under and not complain about it, but somebody oh. new coming in might feel the cold a lot more. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're the main sort of issues. Okay. And like you said too, not everything's perfect. Like no. even with resale, new builds, it doesn't matter like what you're purchasing, you're never yeah. gonna really find that perfect house. Yep. There's always things that need to be done. Um, and then, yeah, I wanna know actually, what's the, <laughs> what are the craziest things you've ever seen on a home inspection? Um, well, <laughs> ha having the drone, you can see so like some crazy things and I <laughs> put the drone up once and I saw a couple in the swimming pool at the next door property <laughs> getting a little bit hot and heavy. Um, that, that, was, that was one of the craziest things and yeah. probably one of the ones where he hide the drone very quickly yeah. outside. Yeah, what's your reaction when you're down there? You're oh, it was Keep it to yourself? It was move the drone, keep it to myself and just carry on. And yeah. Just spinning the drone to change the camera angle. Oh, um, but they're just in the pool and they wave. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been even more embarrassing. But actually within the home, um, I went into an inspection and there was people up in the bedroom um, just viewing the house. And the floor was bouncing, so like four to six inches wow. as they were stepping across the floor because they'd taken out a load-bearing wall, not put a sufficient uh, joist in, not supported it correctly, so the whole um, ceiling was moving. Wow. Now we're really seeing cool. a lot of those walls being removed right now in renovations. A lot of people are doing Open it. Open concept. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's popular. So, I mean, we're going to hope people are using permits, but sometimes you get yep. somebody goes in and does it, has no clue what they're doing, and then... It'd be a major issue if I saw a floor moving like that. I'd probably be like, "We gotta go to the house now." Oh, uh, well, I, <laughs> I don't I, want to be you, here you anymore. You wouldn't know if your whole I, family I, went upstairs to go check yeah. and it was moving. No one was downstairs. I, I stopped the inspection straight away. I was out of there and just said to the client that no. you got a choice. Like you're going to have to put a considerable amount of money into this, but structurally, it's not safe. Mm. Oh, that makes me sick. So it was stepped away quick. Mm. Crazy. Um, have you ever come across? a perfect home? Not fully perfect. There's always going to be some element of defect in there. Um, I've been very close where it's just been sort of like parge and deterioration mm -hmm. or maybe just like an, an open ground or something on that side of it but there hasn't been one which has been a hundred percent clear of any defects. Really? Quite a few very close Yeah. Mm -hmm. but there's normally just something minor in there like a parge and deterioration which could let moisture into the basement so okay it, do you it, remember where in hamilton um that was actually in burlington oh is it oh they're not perfect homes i guess in hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty close but, too bad <laughs> but i'm incredibly detailed with what i look for and want to give people That's good. an idea of what could happen and the potential so it's hard for me to sign off a real perfect home of course yeah. don't look for it but it's just them sort of things which can cost them a lot of money you need to help them out nice yeah. and so like what are your fees for the different types of inspections that you do like what can somebody expect to pay um well we charge per sort of square foot um so anything up to 1500 square foot is 325 dollars and then every thousand square foot it goes up by 25 bucks okay, okay. and then for the pre-con site pre-consults it's 150 dollars plus tax that's great and you're because you're almost hitting basically all the major systems on a pre-console. Yep. So I mean, for 150, it's yeah. and then worth it. And then if you have the home inspection afterwards, I deduct 150 off the home inspection price and then come and do a full inspection again. Oh, nice. So you get a two for one. Fantastic. Um, I guess that's all we have for you today, but uh, what's the best way we can contact you? Um, well, cell phone number, 289-828-4837. There you go. We'll, we'll link yeah. that in the description box as well. And either email, and that's stuart.webstyle at abiaschoice.com 
or Instagram, stuart.inspects.abiaschoice. And we'll link that all as well. Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks so much for joining us, Stuart. Yeah, it's been great so having much. you on thank the you. show. Uh, lots of great content today. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. It was great to see you again. If you have any questions for Stuart or how to reach out to him, just drop a comment below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that little bell so you get notified every time we have a new episode. But uh, we look forward to talking to you guys again next week. Take care. See ya.